Good morning students. I am Manasi Devi from the Department of English, Gwalpara College and the topic for today's discussion is post-structuralism and deconstruction. This is a topic which we need for our fifth semester students. Students, Uh, before go, before teaching uh, post structuralism we need to know the history of literary criticism and literary theory so for the history first we need to know who is plato aristotle and longinus students plato aristotle and longinus have been covered in the previous classes today to uh, read the history of literary criticism and theory i will have to uh, talk from william wordsworth's preface to the lyrical ballads Samuel Taylor Coleridge's Biographia Literaria, Matthew Arnold's The Study of Poetry and Philip Sidney's An Apology for Poetry. Before knowing post-structuralism and before knowing deconstruction, we need to know how, uh, I mean how uh, things, how people they were you know going away from the, uh, from the writer and to the text proper. So when William Wordsworth, he was you know when William Wordsworth was uh, critiquing particularly he was critiquing poetry, the genre poetry through his preface to the lyrical ballads, he was actually questioning, he was contesting uh, the neoclassical poets, neoclassical poets who were writing prior to the romantic period. So when uh, William uh, Wordsworth, when he was you know when he was critiquing those poets, he was actually first thing that was in his mind was what is the motive of writing poetry. The motive of writing poetry is to derive pleasure and the neoclassicists they were using a language which was very uh, very hard to understand. They were mainly writing mock heroic poetry, they were mainly writing satirical poetry. But William Wordsworth in the preface to the lyrical ballads, he was mainly concentrating on the language of poetry and poetic diction which will appeal, which will appeal to the common masses. Common masses must derive pleasure and first and foremost common masses should, uh, how do I put it, common masses should understand the poem. Secondly, Samuel Taylor Coleridge in his Biographia Literaria was actually, he was, uh, con he was concentrating on two ideas that is fancy and imagination. Matthew Arnold's study of poetry, very importantly when we read Matthew Arnold's study of poetry, I will just summarize it because the topic for today's discussion is post-structuralism. But then Matthew Arnold was also critiquing poetry, when, uh, when he was actually, he was uh, kind of uh, giving us a theory of poetry where he came up with the touchstone method. He, he came up with this idea that when readers they critique a poet, when, they, when readers they critique a poem, they will have to compare their poem to other poets and the passages. Then Philip Sidney's An Apology for Poetry. Philip Sidney's An Apology for Poetry is actually a defense against Stephen Gossens and his idea that poets they actually take uh, people away from reality. These people who are also a part of criticism and theory, these people they were actually bringing out a theory how on how to read poems now students after uh, after you know these all these po after all these uh, critics we come to ts Eliot's tradition and the individual talent in uh, in uh, tradition and the individual talent ts Eliot he comes up with a theory called impersonality theory of poetry now when we read impersonality theory of poetry it is basically again ts Eliot. we can call ts Eliot a modern critic he was actually taking uh, these taking his readers away from uh, away from the poet he was he he said that uh, the reader when he the reader when he reads or the reader when he critiques the text proper he should concentrate more on the poem more on the uh, poem proper rather than the poet's uh, feelings and emotions rather than the author's biography the history part no the, we need to concentrate on the poem proper and the personality of the poet, therefore impersonality theory of poetry. The personality of the poet is not at all important when we critique the text proper. Text here, uh, in case of tradition and individual talent, the text is a poem. When he was explaining the uh, theory of impersonality theory of poetry, he came with an analogy, the analogy of a catalyst. This catalyst is a filament of uh, platinum. When we dip up the filament of platinum in oxygen and sulfuric acid, we get sulfur dioxide. But that filament of platinum actually is the poet and the, the oxygen and the uh, sulfuric acid, they act as the poet's uh, emotions and feelings. Now, 
uh, the, the, the end product that is the sulfuric acid has no trace of the, uh, of the filament of platinum. Similarly, similarly according to T.S. Eliot, the poet, the, poet, the, poet uh, the, person, the person, the poet should not be seen in the poem. So, that is impersonality theory of poetry. This is very important students when we read deconstruction and uh, post-structuralism because we see that the, 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 the main job of the critic, the main job of the critic is to go away, is to go away from the, uh, from the poet and concentrate more on the text and how to create meaning, how to derive meaning, therefore meaning making and its relation to criticism and theory. And students mark this, I have also used many colors while writing meaning making and I will also try to explain why I did that. After reading, uh, t after uh, now we will try to move forward t from T. S. Eliot's tradition and the individual talent to uh, yes to uh, new criticism and its relation to structuralism and post-structuralism. Now, students, this very concept of new criticism is actually a door, it is a window to go to uh, structuralism and post-structuralism and hence deconstruction. So, first when we read, uh, when we read, so now uh, the, the, the question is what is new criticism? Again new critics, the new critics are um, Clean Brooks, William Wimsett, Monroe Beardsley, I. Richards and there are many more. They again say that when we read a poem particularly again they have taken the genre of the poem, when we read a poem we should not concentrate on the author, we should concentrate on the uh, grammar of the poem, the words of the poem, basically the poem proper and no we should never concentrate, we should not concentrate, I as a critic, readers as a critic who are reading the poem, the text proper, the text proper of the poem should not read, should not go into the, should not go into the autobiographical details should not go into the history of the poet but rather should concentrate on the text. This was the main intention behind the new critics and most importantly um, there is a, there is a uh, text the intentional fallacy and the, from that text comes this idea of the intentional fallacy the, the, the idea that you know these new critics were proposing that idea of you know going away from the author going away from the author and concentrating more on the uh, more on the poem also is generated by this idea of the intentional fallacy which was propounded which was proposed by William Wimsett and Monroe E. Beardsley. From uh, the intentional from this uh, this idea of the intentional fallacy actually talks about how when a reader as a critic mark please uh, concentrate students when a reader as a critic is uh, not we should not concentrate on the intention, we should not concentrate on the intention of the uh, writer, the poet, but on the text proper. Again, the critics are, the modern critics are, the new critics are taking the readers away from the uh, author and taking us more closer to the text proper to the poem. This is the, these are the ideas propounded by the new critics and new criticism as a theory. Therefore, new criticism proposed the autonomous existence and nature of the literary text that is an autotelic text. A text has to be autonomous, it should be functioning on its own rather than therefore the, 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 the readers they should not concentrate, they should not concentrate on the author because the text now has an autonomous existence and nature of the literary text has become an autotelic text. Now from uh, new criticism students, we have come to structuralism. To understand post-structuralism and deconstruction, it is very important to understand structuralism. Now what is structuralism? As, as I said, since from the, uh, from, the, uh, from the very beginning of this lecture, we were concentrating on T.S. Eliot and tradition and the individual talent where he propounded the idea of uh, impersonality theory of poetry where we need not give uh, attention to the personality of the poet but concentrate on the poem. The same idea was propounded by the new, new critics and from now, from now, from the new, from, uh, from new criticism we are now, we will have to now come to structuralism. So, post-structuralism and deconstruction actually takes its idea from structuralism which is again an anti-foundational philosophical thought in human history. Uh, students, hmm. 
Structuralism and its meaning production, it was actually propounded by this famous author Ferdinand de Saussure and his seminal work, A Course in General Linguistics. Actually, in, uh, in this um, in this seminal work by Ferdinand de Saussure, he came up with uh, uh, you know how to analyze how to analyze language, and he divided language into two parts. One is the lang how a set of rules how we uh, how we uh, use language, and the other is parole, you know the context. So he divided language into two sets: that one is lang, and the other one is parole. When he was writing uh, uh, this text, a uh, work in general linguistics. Uh, Ferdinand de Saussure, he, came, he said that the relation between a word and here actually starts the uh, base, the uh, base of structuralism. Um, Ferdinand de Saussure, he was actually drawing a relationship between a signifier and a signified. Now students, what is a signifier and what is a signified? A signifier is the word and what it signifies. Signifier is the word cat and it actually signifies that furry animal. So, signifier is the word and signified is the concept. But according to Ferdinand de Saussure, because here what, what are we doing? We are constantly, why do we read a text? Students, we read a text to derive meaning. And according to Ferdinand de Saussure, how do we derive meaning? First, we look at the word and then we look at the concept. And But then the, the relationship between these two, the signifier and the signified the relationship is arbitrary. There is no natural relationship, but then the, that relationship is made through conventions. From ages, from ages students, I will just give an example to uh, make you better understand this concept. Since ages, we know that when, when somebody says that cat, we will know that the cat is a furry animal. But then cat and that furry animal has no natural relationship. They are just, you know, that the meaning is very arbitrary. It is not natural. When, uh, when, if I give you the example of traffic lights, red means there is danger. When the green signal comes, we, we, we automatically, it comes to our mind that we need to go. But then there is no natural relationship between the color red and the, and the idea of danger. But we have set it as a, as convention says us. So, students, this is a structure which the structuralist suggested to, uh, you know, analyze a text, a signifier and a signified and the relation, first is the, uh, the relation is very arbitrary. Second, thirdly, students, uh, the, the um, you know, how a meaning is produced. First is it is arbitrary and second is relationality. Now, when we say that, what is a cat? A cat is a cat because it is not hat or mat. This is, these are some of the, you know, ideas that Ferdinand de Saussure, he proposed in his uh, seminal essay, uh, a course in general linguistics. Interested, who is, who was interested in the relationship between the elements of a structure that results in meaning. Uh, specific attention, now as I said in uh, the structure list, they give specific attention to rules, grammar or the elements of a text. Now text can be either a film, novel, drama or poem, but particularly we are here talking about poetry, poem. Um, so, now from uh, the uh, structuralist, now we are finally coming to post structuralism. Now, post structuralism, as the word suggests, seems to uh, um, it uh, actually it, it is a uh, it uh, when the word suggests that post structuralism comes after structuralism, and here we come to uh, we come we will meet writers like Jacques Derrida, and uh, these are uh, these are some of the you know. Uh, prominent writers when uh, when we read uh, the idea of post structuralism the prominent uh, writers are Jacques Derrida Mikhail Bakhtin uh, Michel Foucault but then first i want to discuss Rolla Barth Rolla Barth and his uh, seminal essay uh, death of the author now when we when we hear the death of the author what comes to our mind how can an author die but as i said when we are analyzing a text when we are analyzing a text, uh, we, we need to go away. This is what the modern critics, this is what new criticism teaches us how to analyze a poem, how to analyze a text. This is what uh, the new critics teaches us and this is what now, now at this point we have come away from structuralism. Now, now that we are now reading post-structuralism, Rolla Barth says that once 
a writer has written a text the writer is dead once a writer has written a text the writer is dead and after that the author is kind of an interpreter the author is now actually he will or he or she will be writing the text for example if i if i am reading a text now i will not think what the author has written or what the author what are the intentions behind behind the writer of when he was writing the text now i will interpret my interpret it according to my uh, my understanding my interpretation therefore students you will remember when i initially i started with uh, this idea when where i use different colors my interpretation will be my interpretation and my interpretation will be very different from other people's interpretation so as i was saying death of the author by rola bart my interpretation will be very different from the interpretations of each and every student sitting in the class so we we all have different interpretations therefore meaning making as i as i started with i use so many colors there why did i use so many colors because every student in this room will have will have different interpretations and therefore the title of this uh, essay the title of this seminal essay by rola bar death of the author now the writer now the reader is no longer just a reader just a passive reader but the reader has become an interpreter and the text has become as the new critics have said the text has become an autotelic text after uh, after um, now we will proceed to derrida's seminal essay structure sign and play in the discourse of human sciences here derrida he talks about how meaning is constantly deferred and how in the process of meaning making how we never reach at only one meaning therefore from this point from this point we come to the concept of deconstruction the meaning is completely deconstructed a text we cannot go and find or we cannot always think about meaning about meaning that the structuralists proposed now in deconstruction every meaning is actually more than meaning making every meaning is resisted and this is the this is the uh, you know gist of uh, derrida structure sign and play in the discourse of human sciences everything is as as uh, julia kristeva's intertextuality also propounds everything is outside the text and nothing and there is no center point therefore from here from here onwards we will go to uh, concepts and ideas like phonocentricism and logocentricism which will which we will uh, discuss in our next class thank you